The general case history is the first step in a medical consultation. It is designed to give the clinician an overall understanding of the past and current health status of the patient. In most instances, you will need to inquire deeper into one of the organ systems, either due to the nature of the presenting complaint or as a result of specific information disclosed during the case history. Although the systemic inquiry may often be viewed as routine screening, it is important to look out for any suspicious pathologies manifesting as red flags. These are signs or symptoms which, when viewed either in isolation or within the context of the whole consultation, may indicate a serious pathology requiring special attention or urgent referral. For instance, the vomiting of blood should always be considered a red flag. In contrast, fresh blood in the stools may not be a red flag if a patient has a history of hemorrhoids, but conversely must be regarded as a red flag if no actual hemorrhoids are present. Of course, it is entirely possible for a patient to have hemorrhoids as well as another serious pathology. Likewise, transient paresthesia in a limb that resolves with changes in posture may simply be due to temporary compression of a vessel or a nerve. However, if persistent or accompanied by muscle weakness and wasting, paresthesia should be regarded as a red flag. As we cover the key questions in case history for each system, we will also identify system-related red flags. However, there are certain signs and symptoms which are not confined to the artificial boundary of systems but regarded as red flags of a general nature. The following signs and symptoms should always be considered as potentially serious that require further action. These are cachexia, unexplained persistent loss of appetite, sudden weight changes, for instance weight loss of more than 2 kilograms per week, unexplained persistent fatigue, recurrent or persistent fevers and night sweats, night pain, unexplained persistent aches and pains, unexplained rashes or changes in skin lesions, unexplained swellings or lumps, heavy, persistent, recurrent or unexplained bleeding from an orifice or easy bruising. Also consider as red flags any history of cancer, recent travel to an epidemic region, accidental ingestion of suspect or known toxic substances, and trauma, especially to head and abdomen. In addition, other less sinister signs and symptoms may be classified as red flags depending on the overall clinical presentation. When evaluating signs and symptoms, the clinician often needs to establish if the source of symptoms are somatic or visceral in origin. The soma includes musculoskeletal structures, the body wall and the limbs. Viscera are the organs, smooth muscle and supporting structures within the main body cavities. Characteristics of somatic symptoms include an association with a physical event, they may be well localized or referred. Referral usually relates to the pattern of dermatomes and myotomes. Usually there are easy to identify aggravating and relieving factors. Most are relieved by rest. The symptoms may alter with changes in position. They can be activity dependent. Unless they are of systemic nature, because of their spinal nerve associations, the symptoms are unilateral. They generally influence the function of the affected region, especially mobility. Cutaneous pain that affects the soma is often characterized as sharp, knife-like, localized and instantaneous. Now let us consider characteristics of visceral symptoms. These include gradual onset, progressive, there may be cyclical patterns. They are not usually altered with changes in posture. Due to their association with the autonomic nervous system, they may have diffuse distribution and are poorly localized. 
as they usually affect hollow tubular structures and smooth muscle walls, they can generate colic or cramp-like symptoms. When severe, they may be associated with fevers and sweats. Their referral pattern does not reflect the dermatomal or myotomal distribution of somatic symptoms. Visceral pain is most commonly described as burning, deep, boring, aching, gnawing, vague, colic-like, and of gradual onset. If, during the course of a general case history, the patient reports symptoms that relate to a particular organ or system, then emphasis should be placed on that area of inquiry. Let us begin this system-specific inquiry with the cardiovascular system. 